So for today, my goal is going to be to primer the inside of the boat. What I'm gonna eventually be doing with inside the seats is just spraying this down with some black enamel. When I build the hatches and everything in here, it'll just help keep it look nice and clean. I removed that diamond plate backer on it. This whole area is gonna get prepped again and then painted in the same gloss white as everything else. First, I'm gonna wipe all the glove down with warm water. Then I'm gonna wipe the entire boat down with acetone and then we'll get to priming. detailing you'll know about a two bucket wash it's really important when you're trying to get um, a mean blush off of epoxy because what will happen is since it's water soluble if you keep dipping your rag into the same bucket of water the blush is going to go into the water and then get redistributed every time you wipe it so the best method is to soak a rag in some warm water wipe it all down then have a rinse bucket and then go back into your clean bucket before you start wiping it Okay, so all the glove has been wiped down. Judging by the condition of this rag after I got done, there's a lot of contaminants I pulled up. I don't know if this is gonna come up on camera, but if you can see inside the buckets, there's like this white milkiness. And on the very top, there's like almost like an oily looking haze. That's what we just wiped off the top of the epoxy. That can interfere with primer and pain. So there you go. So I was just coming back and wiping everything down with the paper towel just to make sure I got all the water off. And the change in this epoxy is night and day after a water wipe down. If you can see now, this is no longer shiny. It's now like a dull finish. And it also feels 100% cured, where before I kept getting like this sticky feeling on it that I felt like it just wasn't curing, but that was the blush. So this may have been cured yesterday um, or even sooner but it's really hard to tell with the blush. And it makes sense because they say that the blush occurs worst when it's colder and when it's more humid. And this was painted in about 50 degrees while it was raining. So we definitely developed a pretty heavy layer of it, but this wipe down is the, the way you handle it. So now I'm just going anywhere I see anything shiny and wiping it down again with the paper towel just to make sure I get it all off uh, before I move to primer. And if you guys are interested in learning more about um, epoxy and blushing, I'll put some links to the resources I read before I did this uh, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I might not be explaining it as accurately or scientifically as I should be. So if you guys want more information, check out the links in the description. do is I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna vacuum the whole boat out one more time because there's little bits of paper towel and some dust in here um, with the vacuum and then once it's vacuumed we're good to go so another neat feature of the glove it that I didn't really realize until I started vacuuming around when you like tap the boat with something um, everything seems much more deadened now I vacuumed this boat out a <laughs> hundred times now for different things using the shop vac. When you hit the nozzle around, it would make like a ringing sound, but now when you do it, it's deadened. It's much more deadened. So I'm thinking that the Glovet epoxy is meant to be flexible. So I think that's absorbing a lot of those vibrations. So I'm hoping that's gonna translate into a quieter hull. All of our prep is complete. Now for the fun part. Well, I didn't feel the need to subject you to the last three hours of priming. Uh, here it is. This is primed with the first coat of primer. Yes, it took three hours to do the first coat of primer. Went through with the brush and I hit all of the ribs and rivets and handles and all the hard to reach places with the brush. Then I came back with the roller. All the rails have been painted now. All of the interiors have been painted. The transom area has been painted, um, primed. Sorry, everything's been primed now. Uh, I'm gonna go back and look for any drips and just rush them out. Let this dry for a little bit and then the second coat of primer will be going on. All right guys, so an update on the painting. 
Um, I have the entire top rail and transom complete. Um, I was only doing the rail with the top side gloss white. Um, this is a more expensive paint that I wanted to make sure was used in the best way. I knew I didn't have enough to do the whole interior in that, but I wanted to make sure that at least the, the, the rails and transom, any of the exterior parts were in that color. So now for the interior paint, still with Rust-Oleum, but I'm going with the gloss white protective enamel. I was gonna do semi-gloss on the interior, but I think I'm just gonna keep it consistent with the gloss coating all around. Gloss coatings also provide better protection from like abrasions and stuff like that. So I was hoping that this way I'll have a more protected interior, it'll be easier to clean, and it'll be more durable. And then on the off chance that there is um, damage or something like that on the inside, I have an easy to get and cheap to replace paint. The inside of the hatches have all been sprayed out with black enamel. So the plan now is to get the interior painted with the white enamel now that the transom and edges are all done. Well, after a couple hours of painting and a couple coats of paint, here's the final product. I am really happy with how the gloss white enamel blended with the hypergloss exterior paint. All in all, the paint was super easy to work with and being around $11 a can, it was very affordable. With the interior painting finished, the next step is finally getting to work on the flooring and bench tops. I really can't wait to see how it looks when it all comes together. Now that the painting's complete, we're well on our way. I hope you guys liked this video. If so, let me know by hitting that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.